Um, Sir Sasha, you were rolling on the child table? Yeah. Congratulations, you have twins! Roll a d6. What? They are both female. I feel like the uh, that family from uh, one of those those uh, Monty Python sketches is that they have like so many children that they just pop them out. Yeah. Because this one, two, three. This is her seventh child. <laughs> yeah. Let play. me know when you have a name for those girls. And uh, let's see here, Sir Marcus, with a fourteen and a nine. Both of your children live. One of them is ill, however. The Sir Aidwald, your child automatically lives, right? Because you live spectacularly. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. your kid's fine. Sir Corin, uh, all of your children live, but one of them gets sick. I can't wait to hear how Sir Sasha's kids do, since his kids have a habit of dying horrible deaths while quite young, including these two new kids he has to roll for. <laughs> one second, I, I want to... What is the, the current year is 490s? Six? That's yeah. the year ending. Yeah, it's the year four ninety six end of. Alright. Lydia. Did, is she a Huscarl? Does she travel around with knights and talk about how she has to carry their burdens? <laughs> I um, have I have a theory I have a theory for I have just a suggestion for the rumor surrounding Sasha. He's killing his own children to extend his own lifespan. Wow. Because, no. you know, Sasha's not looking like he's getting older with his size decreasing and everything. Yeah, he's <laughs> becoming wizened. Hey, you're, the, you're so probably the oldest like, out of any. Ah, they once called me Sir Sasha the Large. I weighed over 300 pounds. And we see this, like, guy hobbling on a staff. He's, like, 90 at best. Oh, shit. I one of my rolls out. I'm just going to quickly make it right now. Okay. All your kids. Do you really only have one other kid left? I, I have... <laughs> Four dead children. <laughs> That's rough, man. That's fucking rough. And I only said he he was using them to survive, not yeah, to yeah. look healthier. I'm just telling you guys, you gotta sleep with whores. It's the only way to have enough children. Elle's been doing fine. Sleep with whores or live super rich. <laughs> Either way, you're spending lots of money. Uh, everyone needs to roll 2d20s for their family event. Uh-oh, Sasha. You need to roll another d20. Oh shit, Sasha, there's a rumor of adultery in your family. It's your mother. <laughs> what the f- yeah, She's gone. They talk she about your the... mom. Oh, roll again then. <laughs> she went to the, the realm, remember? She, she died there. Roll again. No, yeah. wait, no, that's perfect. You know, people are still talking about her. They're like, oh, I heard that his mother was... Did out with the king of the forest savage and that she's boning fairy lords now. And someone else is like, yes, that would explain why he's a pagan. Pagan lover. Alright. <laughs> Corin. Nothing. Oh, rumor of scandal. Bam, you got an 18. Someone in your family is rumored to be a heretic. Rolling in a d20. Sir Corin, your uncle is a heretic. Uh -oh. Is that a cat? I don't know. Did I hear a cat? Does Not Sir Corrin have an uncle? I sure. I feel like his safety should be protected. Eric. Eric, that's you. Yeah, yeah, that's you. I think you need to mute your mic. I don't know what's happening. Oh, I'm eating, but... Alright, cool. Let's see what else happened. Uh, Sasha, Corin, uh, Marcus, you rolled a six. Yep. There's a marriage in your family. Roll another d20. If it's my brother, it's going to be hilarious because he's dead. It is your cousin. You've got plenty of cousins. All right, cool. Yeah. Yep, just write that in there. Uh, recover everybody. Aidwald, 13. Your family member is lost or missing. Roll another d20. It's your grandmother. Watch it be grandmom. It's your father. Nope, roll again. Your father's gone, right? 16. Your aunt. You got plenty of aunts. Alright, cool. Now we move on to training and practice. That's on page 110 of the 
core rule book for Arthur Pendergen 5.1. You can pick <coughs> one of those three options, and then your wives, if you have them, get 1d3 skill points as well. Side, where's that? Uh, you can only raise a attribute. Let's see here. Up to the maximum, or not at all? Yeah. I know yeah. you can't raise size, but. Yeah, you can never raise size except with your special points. Can you still raise other ones? Is it your to con maximum? already at maximum? No, it was at. Uh, it was at 20 because it was lowered okay. before. Yeah, yeah. So you I've, I've been account. trying to keep it up, but it keeps on going down. Yeah, you spend your time in your manor, like, lifting heavy iron bars. Just, I'm getting uh -oh. old. i got to keep the reps up. <laughs> I think that would be strength. Sweet. Oh, it's endurance, man. I'm really extra strength points. Strength would be like throwing yeah. medicine balls around. <laughs> Except in this case, the medicine inside them is probably heroin. Opiates. Oh shit, Sir Marcus, you just got a fuck ton of skill points. And he's gonna put that towards this new siege thing that he's been learning about. So <laughs> yeah, siege. are you literally like walking over to Awald's castle and just like finding a siege engineer and like, all right, let's. Sorry, I gotta get my glasses. All right. Let's nerd things up here. All right, so uh, uh, constant velocity of 9.8 meters a second squared in the downward acceleration means you need to fire with roughly an upward and over force of so many newtons, even though acceleration in the downward has not been hypothesized and Newton isn't even alive yet. Uh, yeah. I think it's he's more like at this stage of siege level seven. You know the basics. All right, there's a stone wall. Let's see how hard we need to hit it. <laughs> Wooden walls. Hmm. Burn them down, I guess. How much force do you need to to plow through five different pagans? <laughs> oh. Wait, what? <laughs> uh, that's that sound again. <laughs> um okay let's do glory so you get all the glory from your wives at this point all of the glory you got from uh maintaining your manor should be there if you have any special glory from castles and stuff that should be added now did anyone break a thousand no i don't think so i probably won't but all right you also get to add any passions or traits that are above 16. Yeah. What is you the wife glory? Uh, if your wife has a constant yearly glory oh, okay. that she can provide you with. No, definitely not. Pour hot oils on Saxons who knock on their gates. It's a good way to start start the fight. Just be like, oh, yeah! It's coconut oil! Oh, mmm, tastes delicious. Yeah. <laughs> you see the gay guard up top. He's like, it's good for your complexion! <laughs> no one broke a thousand? Yep. Okay, let me do the map on this. Hundred ninety five, not bad. We had like no combat this year, just had one mission, right? Yeah, surprisingly you guys managed to not kill anybody. Shit yeah. Hopefully we'll be able to keep this going and not have to kill those within our uh 
let's let's just not let people die. How about that? Uh, is everybody got the glory calculations done? Just finishing it up. All right, Hang let's on. see here. Sir Sasha finishing strong. Got a nice high number there. Uh. Yeah, mine's gonna be shit this year, so let's see. Yep. All right. Uh, I think that's everything, right? Has yeah. anyone, I asked, just to be sure, has anyone reached their religious bonuses? Like 16 plus on all the things you need. Not yet. Aidwald okay. is really, really close. He's one point away, but he's not there yet. <laughs> so close to being a good Christian knight. <clears throat> then he turns evil and I start giving him check marks for cruelty every time he smokes some pagans. <laughs> All right, let's let's move on. Wow, that actually took a super long time, but it was a pretty interesting end of year. Uh, where are we at? We are at the edge of 497, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> um, blah blah blah. We begin the year at Countess Ellen's court, held in Sarum, in the springtime, at the Pentecostal feast. There are two Saxon special guests, the Aethlings Sinric, who I don't believe we've met, and Aeskwine, who hates Sir Robert and has put out a, uh, the death sentence. <laughs> You've got the death sentence in 12 Saxon worlds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're talking about Star Wars in the chat, so I feel like, I've got the death sentence! Man, and then that other dude got his hand chopped off. Just saying. They had a thing about chopping off hands in Star Wars. Happens all the time. <clears throat> so, uh, we actually have two men sitting outside on a bench uh, underneath the tower. And the first one is like, Let me tell you, son. This is pretty grim. There's a sickness among them pig farmers, you know. And the cattle aren't calving properly. We're going to be short meat this year, I'm afraid. And the younger man is like, Uh-huh, uh-huh, but with all those farms that were burned down, you'd think there'd be more venison to find, too. Well, I'll say it. There's still a man shortage. This is serious news. The man's like, Oh, listen, it's not so bad. We got a good spring to plant. Bananas, you got the lambs coming in just fine. And the invaders want to be friendly for a while. I think we should just offer the money. They'll go away. It's not much worse than usual. You know, except for the shortage of men. And then he, like, looks at the older man and goes, And there's certainly no shortage of marriageable women. And the older man laughs and is like, <laughs> uh, Don't you think this is all just a ploy, boy? Didn't Sir Drick's father murder everyone with treachery? Why is anyone trusting him at all? Uh, so, at the implied suggestion from Sir Marcus, who I'm guessing was going to tell the uh, lady, Countess Ellen, to set up watch posts to bring news back to the center yeah. of the realm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that, ca that happened in a flashback scene. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven... Eight messengers who bring news back from the borderlands. Uh, Sir, C or I'm sorry, Sinric of Wessex is introduced. He is an Aethling. You've actually met him before. He is the man who met you at the borderlands into King Serdic's realm and offered to be a hostage. He's actually Serdic's son, and so he's an Aethling as well. Okay. Uh, so the people you can speak with are the eight messengers, the two eighthlings, and the countess. Anyone else at the court that you would like? There are a number of famous knights visiting. Uh, Duke Ulfius is visiting as well. And a, uh, a well-known banneret rides in. So over the last year, this guy has been gaining infamy. His name is Sir Allen. 
And uh, he's been retaking manors along the Silchester Salisbury line. You know, now that the country's in chaos, he's been like conquering manors and either forcing the Silchestering lords to bow to him or kill them and then put somebody else in that manor. So he's become super popular because he's adding to the wealth of Salisbury at a time when it's pretty difficult to get anything done. So I, I suspect we, we come into the scene with the four of you getting ready to go into the feast hall when on this enormous horse that's like two hands taller than any other horse in the whole stable, he comes riding in like, <laughs> that's right, I'm rich and white at a time when rich white dudes are the best ever. <laughs> and he's got like, purple clothing and like velvet and like a fancy hat from France and he's like ha ha ah uh, is that ah uh, Sir Marcus Sir Edward Sir Sasha and Sir Corin how are you well met I am Sir Alan perhaps you knew my father Sir Quantus you said these he was taken from Silchester and given to Salisbury yes okay so he's just like well met my my uh, social equals. And then he just kind of looks sideways at Sir Marcus and is like, and Sir Marcus. <laughs> uh, good to see someone so optimistic, Sir Alan. Oh, it's been a great year. Great year. Yeah, it was so many new knights. I, my father passed on his legacy to me. I, just a simple man of 18, and already I have seven children. <laughs> it's been a great year. Well met, sir. Well met, sir, Alan. Uh, you, I hear you've been uh, doing great things at the border. Oh, with, fantastic uh, things. So, so good. In fact, I wanted to talk to the rest of you when we're in the feast. Come seek me out. I have a quest for you. A particularly pernicious Salisbury lord that that comes from Silchester. He has a manor on our side of the border, and I need to root him out. You know, you are the knights to do it, I think. I need you on my side. And he kind of, like, throws... He lit Okay, so, yeah, he literally throws some gang sign. Because this is like a... A Romeo plus Juliet reinterpretation of the story, right? <laughs> so, so, yeah, he's just like, yeah... Salisbury for life. And then he rides his horse into the stable like, yeah, I'm badass as fuck. I'm wearing fancy clothes. Consider it. <laughs> like, uh, as he passes you, he turns to look at you, Sir Sasha, and says, Sir Sasha, didn't I see you wearing that at last year's Pentecost? The times have not been uh, kind to me, it seems. So he, he leans in close and says, my apologies. I was making a jest, but if that is true... I I have offended you, which is against the laws of hospitality. I, if you were to accept my quest, sir, or send someone in your stead, you could get a share of the profits of taking the manor. I wouldn't do well. it for the sake of profits. In fact, I foresaw uh, getting new clothes for myself so that my knights might have a new pair. You are truly an honorable knight, sir. I hear that you have sheltered the pagans from the wrath of the Christians. I, I looked at the three next to me. I am trying my best. <laughs> you are one of the best among us. Perhaps not as great as me, but one day you shall be. And so, what's interesting to know is that this guy has, not only is he like 18, he has way less glory than you, and he is mouthing the fuck off. How do you feel about that? Uh, well, Sasha's never one for, like, for caring too much about, like, being okay. uh, viewed as uh, an upper... I don't know what the word for it is. Uh, an elite. An elite. Yeah. But uh, he also likes the optimism. Likes that optimism. Good. Excellent. Okay. So I just want to cover who you guys can talk to again. The Countess, the Aethling Sinric, son of King Serdic, and Aesquine of Essex. There's also eight messengers from the Borderlands and Duke Ulfius from uh, Silchester and Sussex. <clears throat> he was the uh, king's uh, diplomat. So, what do you guys want to do? This oh. feast is actually pretty rocking. Like, everybody's totally hammered. There's lots of really good food. Surprising, oh. given that it was such a bad winter. You said there were eight messengers from yes, our borderlands? Yep. Um, 
that sounds kind of urgent. I'd like to talk to them. Uh, so it's not it's not urgent, wherein the fact, like, no one's wrote in and been like, oh, God, everything's exploding. There's Saxons everywhere. This is just, like, knights will come in for the feast, and they'll speak to this person, and he'll give them the news. It's just like speaking to a noble, where they give you the news of what's happening. But, okay. you know, because there's no regular information network anymore, this guy basically, like, spends one day in court a week talking to everybody and spreading the news, and then six days on the border. Mm -hmm. well. Okay. So who do you guys want to talk to? Hmm. I just well, first I thought we could somebody. discuss like, amongst ourselves a little bit. Yeah, sure. And just to figure out, like, you know. Oh. Now, that the, now that we have some uh, watchers at the border, you can bring us news. Perhaps uh, we should find a way to um, band together quicker so that we may ride out in case there are any raiding parties. Indeed. Some sort of signal, you mean? Perhaps. A signal would be a good idea. Perhaps the uh, watchman could light a fire of some sort. That Something that smokes quite bright. Oh, yes, that would allow us to rally and then uh, we would be ready when they arrived uh, to let us know the size of the force and uh, how they travel. I suspect, however, that the most urgent question for this year will be both, uh, I suspect, King Serdrick and uh, our uh, annoying other neighbor, Saxon. Yeah, here's an interesting thing. When you guys are talking about getting messages around quickly, um, your your old character squire, Sir Hendrix, comes forward, hmm. Marcus, and says, Sir Marcus, have you spoken with Sir Germain the Dragon? He was speaking mm -hmm. on much the same manner of getting information around quickly. Apparently, the Saxons have some manner of doing it. I'm not sure I fully understood the specifics, but it may be something <coughs> to look into. Using the weapons of the enemy against them. Oh, that is good thinking, uh, Sir Hendricks. Thank and uh, it would be pleasant to have uh, information on the, from the Saxons, from a friendly Saxon, as surely he will be. <laughs> so Sir Hendricks looks at you kind of sideways and is like, he is quite friendly, that is for sure. Well, aggressively friendly, but still. I have never seen a man drink so much and not be dead. Not even you, Sir Sasha. Then he, like, ribs you in the elbows and is like, Aren't you... Did you lose a belt size, Sir Sasha? <laughs> uh... I may have... Uh, no, no, it's alright. I, I feel... Those fine. old clothes are looking Same rather loose on you. I can Same as before. Yes, yes. You are looking quite stylish, even a year's clothing out of date. Mr. So Marcus will add to uh, Sir Hendrix says, uh, It is good to see you are doing well, Sir Hendrix. You have served my family well. Yes, How has, uh, I think new... your brother was... gave me an opportunity to serve as a knight, and since that time, I have faithfully served your family. Yes, and uh, how is the? New oh, and uh, Marcus has given one of those three manners for knights that he was given. One of those has gone to um, Sir Hendrix, since he was a you know is a way to reward That's him and have a knight. I don't know if Hendrix yeah. wants to be beholden to you, but yeah, I think he'll take it. He yeah, because it's an. Money. I mean, he was just being maintained by me. Yeah. Uh, afterwards, as well, yeah. so you know. Okay, so yeah, he'll become one of your castle knights. So yes, he's like, yeah, yeah he's like my lord, of course. Anything for you. I must say, the winter at your castle, uh, there were a number of minstrels from a traveling mummers band who got snowed in. I got to practice my lute. I have some pretty fat jams that I have written down. I've just <laughs> got this one about a watchtower. Yes, I practice it very long. I call it all about the watchtower. I, I'll work on the name. You should come by and listen to it sometime. Ah, oh, I certainly shall. And some advice. Ah, you should find yourself a wife soon. He says you did not hear then. 
No, I did not. I, <laughs> my wife I took had died in childbirth at this year, oh. but fortunately I have a number of bastard sons. Three of them, in fact. Your gift of a manor will help support them well. <laughs> Good. But you must also seek to find a more noble wife to better your station for the future. Perhaps, perhaps. I'll, I will speak to the Countess Ellen about it. Uh, you should. Okay. So, yeah. All right. All right, so I'm finishing. So we'll figure out the smoke signals or whatever signals the Saxons use. we got to do <laughs> yes, that. Yes, they do, they do use smoke signals to communicate quickly. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I guess maybe speak with uh, Aethelene, um son of Serdic. What was his Sinric name again? of Wessex. I wanted to go to first. Yeah, so Sinric, you, you're uh, Sir Marcus and Sir Aidwald, you're both meeting with Sinric. No, no, yeah. Sir Sasha and mm. Sir Aidwald. Okay, so yeah, Sinric is somewhat alone, and he says, Ah, yes, Sir Aidwald, the virtuous, correct? And Sir Sasha, I remember you both from last year. You came to visit my father. I appreciate that you did not take me hostage. Your honor does you well. It speaks I well for you among the Saxon community. Wow. We the were way to start good relations is upon uh, good relations as a foundation. There are not many knights who would show the level of trust that you did. And well, so I say again, I appreciate it. We appreciate that uh, your father demonstrated similar honor in releasing us. Have mm. you considered bending the knee? We have spoken with our lady concerning the position of Salisbury and we are however I do not know her current mind on the subject. Okay. So he, he kind of like brushes off his clothing, which is very very Saxonish, you know, lots of animal <coughs> furs and like quilting. And he just like shrugs his shoulders. He's a very handsome, well mannered man. And strangely, he smells a very bitter iron, like like he's just been in a forge, and says, I understand that your land suffered from the hands of my... And he says a word in, in Saxon that I don't think any of you understand, but he's like, uh, my uh, heir Esquine, just... If you were to ally yourselves with my father and our British Empire, we would ensure that Esquine sets no foot in your lands. The plunder and assault upon your people does not have to happen. All you need do is but bend the knee and send the tribute. Well, we shall certainly convey your message. From what I have understood from speaking with your father, he seems to be a fair liege. But uh, he's a very competent battle leader as well. He spent many years fighting the Franks and the Danes on the continent. Indeed, but alas, I cannot commit on the part of my liege. But I, I, uh, I feel my loyal loyalties also lie with the uh, Countess rather than your father. But if, uh, I wish for you to speak to the Countess on, on your own behalves and the behalves of all of your people to get her to pay the tribute needed and to pledge fealty to Cerdric, the true king, high king of Britain. With the support of Salisbury, we would control much of the south. It would be very easy for us to take Cornwall and from there perhaps even Silchester and Maybe Somerset? I understand from my, my information network that you have some issues with the king of Estragales, Orcus. We could help you in that regard. I, I would not say anything dishonorable to you knights, but there are many Saxons who would like to add another notch to their great axes by taking the head of a king. Hmm. They would, we could arrange this for you. Well, you can see Aidwald is If a man is to die, it is not to be in such a way. I understand. 
Your ways are not the Saxon ways. I, they, 